The increasingly violent reality since June is hurting Hong Kong's economy. The continuing unrest has crippled our retail trade, as well as catering, transport, and numerous other businesses associated with the tourism industry. Nothing justifies violence, and our first priority must therefore to end violence and restore law and order as soon as possible. The Hong Kong police, which has displayed courage and restraint, as well as every agency in the government, are working in concert with determination to achieve that single objective. Once calmness returns, we are committed to finding solutions to some of those deep-seated problems reviewed by the extensive protests over these past four months, including probably the social divide and insufficient inclusive growth I touched upon in my speech two years ago. For that purpose, I have been in direct dialogue with the community, speaking and listening to individuals and groups, large and small. I've also undertaken to invite community leaders, experts and academics to conduct an in-depth and independent examination of the social conflicts in Hong Kong and the deep-seated problems that must be addressed. We must as well find a way of returning trust to a divided community. And we will not rest, I will not rest, until we have found a peaceful, harmonious and inclusive path to the future for Hong Kong. If you ask me if I have confidence in that vision, I do. That indomitable spirit of Hong Kong will see us through this testing time. Despite our deeply concerning community issues and the rather negative perception of Hong Kong overseas as we have been unfairly portrayed, let me end by emphatically saying that Hong Kong will continue to play a pivotal role in global trade and my government will double our efforts to reconnect.